What's up everybody, Nate here. And our economy has gone through the ringer over the last few years. We have seen everything from sky high inflation to stock market crashes and even record unemployment. And while most of that is now in the rear view mirror here in the United States, solving those issues caused some pretty serious consequences. The largest one being a huge debt bubble. How millennials like myself know the unbearable weight of debt. Most of us have tens of thousands of dollars in student loans, but this goes beyond millennials and student student loan debt. We are starting to see national governments throughout the entire world struggle with their debt. We're also starting to see major corporations struggle with debt as well. And in general, Americans are more in debt today than they pretty much ever have been in American history. Now, it goes without saying that borrowing and having all of this record high debt cannot just simply continue to go up and up forever. Eventually, the United States and corporations and Americans are going to hit a limit. That would mean this debt bubble essentially pops and tens of trillions of dollars is left hanging there. So today I want to talk about a few of the things that sort of led us here and I want to talk about what could actually be coming next now that this bubble may have popped. And if you learned a thing or two from this video make sure to leave a like below, hit that sub button and ring the bell as well. That way you can stay up to date with everything going on in the business and financial world seven days a week and don't miss any of the uploads on this channel. So there are three major types of debt that are sort of causing a lot of issues around the the world right now. We have corporate debt, we have national debt, and we also have personal debt. These things have been sort of growing exponentially and out of control for a very, very long time in the United States and globally. But over the last couple of years, they have exploded in growth for a few different reasons. But before I kind of get into that, I want to talk about a concept that I like to call the infinite debt cycle. The infinite debt cycle is something that is explained really, really well by expert and economist Ray Dalio. And it explains why this debt bubble continues to rise basically uncontrollably in the United States. So the infinite debt cycle basically works like this. If you have an income in the United States, well, that means you are essentially able to leverage that income into monthly payments in order to borrow more money. You can use this money to do whatever you want. You can buy an investment property. You can go out and spend this money. You can buy a house. You can do whatever you want. Most Americans have an income because most Americans make their money from a nine to five job. So if you're somebody that makes, say, $100,000 in the United States, well, then you can reasonably go to a bank and borrow, say, around $10,000. Now you have around $110,000 that you can spend. Right off the bat, if you spend this $110,000, which the majority of Americans spend most of their income every single year, so if they make $110,000, they spend $110,000. What you're essentially doing is making a corporation or a business a whole lot richer. So now you pump that $110,000 into the economy and a corporation and a business now has $110,000 that they can now go out and spend. But the cycle continues because now that corporation has an income of its own. It has revenue, it has profits, and it can leverage that revenue and those profits into borrowing more money. So that $110,000 goes into a business or a variety of different businesses. And now these businesses, businesses can borrow more money. They continue to borrow money and they continue to spend money and they're doing this to grow their business and that means more factories, that means a lot more employees. So more money is being pumped into the economy but we only have so much money in the United States. That means as these businesses start to borrow and spend a lot more money, the Federal Reserve who is in charge of telling the Treasury Department how much money needs to be printed every year, well they decide that they need to print more money. So now there's more dollars that exist. So that means that the buying power of all the dollars goes down. So now people don't make as much money. So they need to make more money so businesses start to give them a raise. So now that person who has made $100,000 and borrowed $10,000, well, they can actually borrow more money because they got a raise from their job. And a lot of the times, Americans are going to do that. So now they borrow even more money and that means businesses spend more money and that means means the Fed has to print more money. That cycle alone has created a system in the United States of outstanding debt. And it means that borrowing is just going to continue and it means that all of this money printing is always going to happen. But now things have kind of gotten out of control over the last couple of years. Obviously the pandemic and things like stock market crashes and a recession really sort of threw off our entire economy. But what it also did was sort of accelerate this debt cycle in the United States. 
States. Corporate debt in particular has sort of gotten out of control and now we're starting to see a long string of bankruptcies in the US because of all of this corporate debt that's been floating around. When we talk about corporate debt, there's basically two parts to this. There's the part of corporations borrowing money so that they can expand and then there's corporations that have a lot of land. If we talk about the idea of corporations borrowing a lot of money, well, corporations and businesses have been doing this for a very, very long time, pretty much after the Great Recession of 2008. What you've got to remember is right after 2008, the Federal Reserve decided that it wanted to keep its interest rate policy at around 0%. So interest rates were extremely low, which means borrowing costs were very low in the United States. So corporations and businesses and a lot of startups sort of bloomed out of this really bad period in the United States because the Federal Reserve made it easy for people to take on money. It also made it easy for people to buy a car and it also made it really easy for people to get into a house. They wanted to stimulate the economy so they wanted a lot of dollars sort of floating around to get us out of the recession and sort of regrow our economy after the housing crash and stock market crash. Now here's where things get really interesting because when you had that big economic explosion and that big economic expansion, well, a lot of businesses grew really fast and Americans were spending a lot more money and corporations were spending a lot more money too. So they had the profit profits and revenue to pay a lot of these loans back. Same with a lot of their treasury yields and a lot of their assets. So a lot of their assets and a lot of their income was doing very well for a very, very long time. They were able to make their debt payments very easily, but the conditions for debt in the United States have changed a lot in 2023. For one, we have really high interest rates now. So a lot of the debt that these corporations and businesses have taken on, well, it comes with an adjustable rate. That means as as the Federal Reserve raises its interest rates, well, the rate on those loans is also going to go up. So borrowing costs have risen, and now these corporations are having a really hard time paying back those loans. You gotta remember, we're in a period of really high inflation, and we're in a period where borrowing costs are high, and investors don't wanna put a lot of money in the stock market right now or in private businesses. So that means that consumers aren't spending money, and that means that investors aren't investing as much as they were before. So businesses are really not able to pay back those loans anymore. All of this debt that they have is now ballooned into something that is pretty much uncontrollable. Now in a low interest rate environment, what corporations typically do when they have a really hard time paying off their debt is they leverage their income and their revenue. So they get a new loan that basically pays everything off and then they have even more debt, but hopefully in the future they make more in profits so they can pay that that new loan. So the debt that businesses already have is very high, but then you also have high borrowing costs. So now businesses and corporations can no longer afford to just take out a new loan. They have to figure out how to pay this money back and a lot of them can't do it. So that has led to a string of bankruptcies for a lot of different businesses. And a lot of businesses are trying to prevent bankruptcy by closing stores and laying off employees, doing everything that they can. In fact, bankruptcies in the United States and across the world are pretty much higher than they have ever been. That is because of all of the borrowing. We had really low interest rates for a very long time. We had this period of economic expansion where everybody was spending money. The stock market was up. It was really easy to borrow money. So now all of this debt went up and up and up and corporations made the mistake of assuming that it was going to last forever. So they just kept borrowing and they kept spending and so did everybody else in our economy. And then you have the other side of this corporate problem which has to do with corporate real estate. So now you have all of these office buildings. Think of New York City and all of the available rental space for businesses. Well, now all of these corporations are starting to not be able to pay their leases or their rents because they can't afford it. That's a big problem too because it drops real estate values. And if real estate values go down, then the stock market is directly affected because securities like mortgage-backed securities are directly affected. Not to mention it's hard for a lot of these landlords to find tenants to actually rent the places out. So you have all of these office buildings throughout the United States basically sitting vacant and ghost towns of thousands of square feet that are basically unusable because nobody has the money and nobody is able to borrow the money in order to buy these real estate properties or rent them out. Now, the second thing that we need to discuss here is national debt. There has been a lot of issues from a lot of different countries defaulting on their their debt or getting really close to it. We saw Sri Lanka actually default on its debt and Pakistan is getting extremely close. 
Congress. Not to mention here at home, Congress is trying to find a short-term solution to manage our own debt ceiling because if they don't do it by June 1st, the United States might default on its debt. Now, national debt sort of ballooning all throughout the world has a lot to do with really low interest rates as well because when the Federal Reserve set their interest rates to 0% during the pandemic and also kept them at 0% right after the Great Recession of 2008, well, that meant that a lot of investors started to pump money into treasury notes. These are essentially investments into the United States government. So you are essentially going to buy a security by giving the United States government some form of money. And over time, the United States government is going to pay you back for that investment with interest. It's pretty much seen as one of the safest investments that you can make because the United States government is always going to be there. So you have a very low risk of not getting some sort of return on your money. So many investors started to pump money into these securities. And what that did was incentivize government spending. Treasury notes are one of the ways that the United States government makes money because you have investors basically pumping money into a system to give to the United States government. The government then uses this money for whatever they want. You got to remember the United States only has a few different ways to make money. It can make money through taxes, it can print money, or it can get money through treasury bonds. That helped the United States to spend a lot more money money because again, they can leverage a lot of the money that they're getting into debt that they get from other countries like China and Japan. So they were able to borrow a lot more, a whole lot faster because interest rates were at 0% and investors wanted to take that guaranteed investment so they could get a return at some point, especially during times like a recession when people don't know if the stock market is going to remain stable or if other markets like the housing market or the commodities market are going to be a safe investment. So people want to put their money into these treasury yields. Not to mention the United States government has printed a ton of money over the last couple of years because of the pandemic. At the start of 2020, we had around $3 trillion in circulation. And today we have over 20 trillion. So the United States government has printed a lot of money in order to pay back its debts, in order to funnel that money back to the United States economy because they didn't know what was going to happen with the pandemic. We had record unemployment and we had businesses out of work and a sudden stock market crash. So things were very scary. And what the government decided to do was stimulate the economy by lowering interest rates and then giving people money to spend, which basically, which basically created a whole lot of economic expansion very, very fast. But now we are feeling the effects of that with really, really high inflation and also really, really high debt. Other countries have done the exact same thing because they want to follow the United States and its dollar policy. When the United States sort of lowers its interest rates or starts to print a lot of money, well, other countries follow suit so that way their currency can stay competitive with the dollar. The United States dollar is the reserve currency of the world. So that means you have a ton of other countries who are holding on to US dollars and US securities as a means of protection. Our economy, our military, our government is one of the most stable in the entire world. So countries want to hold on to US dollars because it is seen as extremely stable. That means that they're going to have a currency that is valuable and that people want throughout the entire planet. And it helps a lot of countries to use one currency for pretty much everything. So the United States dollar is the main reserve currency of the world, followed by the euro. Now in 2023, the United States dollar is really, really hard to come by because remember, interest rates are really high. The Federal Reserve interest rate right now is at a little over 5%. Compared to two years ago, it was at zero. 0%. So now it's really hard for people around the world and even Americans to borrow money, meaning that the dollar is extremely strong, but all of that debt across the entire world and a lot of these other countries that hold United States debt, well, it is getting really hard to pay off. And a lot of these countries that relied on US dollars and a lot of these businesses overseas that relied on US dollars, well, they can't get that money anymore. So they're starting to fold. Other countries want to keep up with demand. So if United States dollars are hard to come by, then they want to make their currency hard to come by because if their currency is really easy to come by, well, that means that investors are going to buy up a whole lot of it. And that means you're going to have a ton of inflation in that country. You could have a situation like you're seeing in Turkey where inflation is at over a hundred percent. And the last thing we need to discuss here is personal debt. So with interest rates being so low over the last couple of years, it's been really easy for consumers to go out and borrow money. People are going to borrow money for a variety of different things, like for a mortgage, or for a car loan, they're gonna be able to spend a lot easier on their 
credit cards. Credit cards come with an adjustable interest rate that is influenced by the Federal Reserve and its interest rate policy. So the lower their interest rates are, the easier it is for people to make payments so they can spend a lot more. People have done that over the last couple of years because while well, inflation has been really high and there's a lot of things that people just need. A lot of people need to go to the grocery store and they don't have the income to get all of the same things they could before because inflation and the buying power of their dollars has gone down so much. So people are relying on things like credit cards or loans. So that is one side. And then you have the other side where people's incomes may have increased over the last couple of years, giving them a lot more money to spend. And a lot of them have decided to do that with a credit card. That also contributes to inflation because now you have a lot more dollars being pumped into the system and you have a lot more people spending money and buying things. Now the bottom line of all of this is debt only becomes a problem if the borrower can no longer make those payments. And what we're running into right now is national governments, corporations, and consumers are having a really hard time making their debt payments. And the bigger the debt is, the more dominoes it's going to cause to fall throughout the entire world. For instance, with businesses unable to borrow money and to pay off the money that they've already borrowed, well, that means a lot of them are going into bankruptcy or they're cutting jobs in order to make those payments. That leads to more layoffs and potentially unemployment going up in the United States, which means that a lot of Americans can't make their debt payments. And it means that if they don't have an income, they can't go out and borrow any more money. Now they're unable to stimulate the economy because they don't have any money. The federal government is going to get less money in taxes, which means they have to borrow more money in order to pay their bills or print money, which just causes inflation to go up faster. And now people don't have as much money to pump into the economy, which means more businesses start to fail and more people get laid off or lose their job. On the national level, we have seen a very similar thing happen. You have Sri Lanka who has borrowed a ton of money from China, not be able to pay its bills anymore, which means China is losing hundreds of billions of dollars because Sri Lanka isn't able to pay anymore. That hurts its economy and it hurts investment and it hurts businesses and manufacturing, which sort of creates a lot of supply chain problems for people here in the United States and across the world. My point here is this, you had some corporations and some national governments and Americans just assume that this big economic expansion that we had over the last 10 or 15 years or so was going to last forever. And you had a lot of debt created from that because of all of the money printing and really low interest rates. And now everything is sort of starting to fall apart. What we could potentially see for the rest of 2023 and in the future now is a really, really harsh economy and spending environment for corporations, governments, and consumers. When you have a lots of unemployment, when you have a lot of these debt problems, well, what usually happens and what has happened in the past to sort of subvert us going into a debt bubble collapse is the Federal Reserve lowers their interest rates. So that way people spend a lot more money and that stimulates our economy enough to where everybody can start spending money again. But the issue we're facing in 2023 is inflation is incredibly high. Federal Reserve can't afford to continue to just print more money and to keep their interest rates very low with inflation hovering around the 5% mark. They have to get it down or else the United States dollar might not be the reserve currency of the world and eventually it might become worthless. So even though we might have job loss, even though we might have corporations going under and we might have a real estate problem as well, Federal Reserve's hands here might be tied because they might not be able to just lower interest rates like they have in the past because inflation is still too high and if they lower interest rates, that means inflation is just going to go right back up. Effectively making the entire problem a whole lot worse. Now, Obviously, I don't know that for sure. I can't tell you exactly what the Federal Reserve is going to do because I'm not a board member of the Federal Reserve. All of these problems are pretty much out of your control. Whether you're a small business owner or just a regular investor or just somebody who is looking to save or spend a little money this year. Because you can't control the economy and the Federal Reserve, you have to take actions right now that allow you to control your money no matter the economic environment. Financial education is the tool to help you do that so that way you can figure out what to invest in and when and how to actually manage your money the right way. We're breaking down all of that and more here on this channel seven days a week. We're also going over all of the top business and financial news from around the entire country. So if that's something that you like, if you wanna learn more, be sure to hit that subscribe button below because we are talking about all of it pretty much every day. And if reading's more your thing, we're breaking down the top business and financial news over on Market Brief six days a week. We're covering everything from the economy to the global economy, to the stock market, to cryptocurrency, you name it, we're talking about
about it over on Market Briefs, and you can subscribe right now for free by clicking the link in this corner right here. That is it for me, everybody. Be kind out there, and I'll see you all in the next one.